I'm Derek Redfern. And I'm Arjun Aletti, and we're going to talk about uh, data location metadata. So there are <coughs> different types of uh, metadata. The one that we normally interact with is the, you know, what the track number of a song is, or who the artist is, what the length is, or what year it was released. Um, that's known as descriptive metadata. The other type of uh, metadata is structural, which you know talks mainly about, or is, which is data about data containers, and that includes information about location in terms of the disk and which file block it is, the access permissions for different users, and that's what's relevant to us in Sophsys. One type of structural metadata that we'll, um, we're talking about today is location metadata. Um, it specifies where the data for the file is actually stored on the disk. Um, the concept is um, it's very similar to memory page tables, which is where pages of memory are mapped to the page frames on the disk. Metadata for a file is stored in a data structure called index nodes, or inodes for short. As seen in the figure, inodes are arrays that store relevant file data, including mapping file blocks to disk blocks, access permissions, and more. Inodes are tiny uh, compared to the block size. In fact, in a ext3 file system with a 4 kilobyte block size, inodes are only 128 bytes, you know, making them very small. But since inodes are I'm so small, um, they can only refer to very small uh, files. They can only um, allocate um, small numbers of uh, blocks. Now, when you've got more blocks than you've got space in an inode, you can use what's called um, an indirect block, which is where the inode will refer to an indirect block, which um, in turn refers to larger numbers of uh, file blocks. Now for, for even larger files, you can use what's called um, a double indirect or a triple indirect block, uh, which is where you've got um, layers of indirect blocks that all um, refer to each other. Um, now you can see an example here um, represented as a, um, a tree, but the downside of this is that um, when your inode um, refers to both um, single blocks and to triple indirect blocks, um, it becomes imbalanced in that the data blocks are not um, evenly distributed um, across the whole tree. Right, sorry about that. Now in the Unix system, you can allocate up to a um, the triple indirect block, and the inode itself will hold up to 12 blocks. So um, the inode will support a file up to 48 terabytes um, in size. However, um, not all um, operating systems will actually have support for a file that large. Now that we understand what block maps are, the question is should we use them? Let's look at the pros. Uh, first, you know, it's the most basic and easiest to implement map. Uh, another advantage is that I know is that the inode grows predictably. In other words, low-level file blocks are always mapped to the inode. The advantage in that is that when a file grows in size, um, the earlier block mapping information remains unchanged. However, there are several cons involved with the block map. The first being um, mapping. This type of mapping uses a lot of disk space since it maps every single block. And if you have a large number of large files in terms of size, this uh, metadata will add up. Now, another con is consider a file that consists of 20 blocks. The file system will need to do at least two disk read operations. One to read the single indirect block and then one to read the actual data block. Now this assumes that the inode is already cached in memory, having been read uh, in along with other inodes in its disk block, and that the file system is smart enough to read all 20 data blocks in a single operation. 
that is still very slow and if the file system doesn't read all 20 blocks in a row you've got to do multiple IO operations leading to very poor performance. Now, ultimately there is a more efficient mapping um, which is known as the extent map and that is what the group after us is going to talk about. Thank you and hope this helped.